Hey everybody, this is John Lemesny, and uh, today I want to show you how to use uh, French press. I'm going to show you a method that incorporates the cowboy style of uh, coffee preparation. Cowboy style is um, a really simple way to make coffee and um, it's essentially adding the water and the grounds at the same time on the heat and uh, I'm going to also use the press method in order to get the grounds out of it. You could also uh, run it through a strainer but um, I really like the combination of the cowboy method and the French press. It gets really rich uh, intense roasted flavor and is very simple to do. So, I'm going to start here. with uh, one cup of ground coffee. This coffee happens to be ground a little bit finer, more of like an espresso grind, uh, than I really want here. And, but the only problem with it is that uh, it's more likely that I will get some grounds in my coffee press, and it may um, saturate in the roasting process a little bit more than I want it to. But I don't mind the intense flavor, but if you have a choice of a finer ground or a less fine ground, I would say a less fine ground is the way to go. This is my Bodum uh, French press, and I'm going to fill it up to almost the top. Where I'm actually going to fill it up to is to the bottom of this uh, press. And so, it's about like that. Uh, by putting it up there, I make sure that I don't end up throwing out any coffee. So I'm just going to add the grounds and the coffee, I'm sorry, the grounds and the water together. This is just out of the tap. But because I'm going to bring the water to essentially a boil, I don't worry too much about um, the purity of the water. I do have a, a water purifier here, and I usually do if I'm just drinking water. I do not drink out of the tap. I will purify it first. But um, I don't mind the flavor at all from uh, right from the tap if I'm adding coffee to it. If you're a purist, certainly by all means go ahead and use purified water or even bottled water. But, um, like I said, I don't mind it. I'm going to turn my heat on high. I'm going to set my timer for exactly six minutes. The reason I set it for six minutes is because um, before I knew how long it took for my water to get to a boil, I timed it. And the time on my stove, on my electric stove, with this particular pan, with this amount of water, uh, always takes almost exactly six minutes. Sometimes if it's colder in here it might take a little bit longer or if it's warmer it might not take that long. But generally speaking I use the timer as a way of uh, giving me an indication of when I should expect a boil. You really don't want a boil to happen. You just want your uh, coffee to be well integrated into the water and I start that process almost immediately. We're about one minute in, and I'm just starting to mix this together. And you're going to see the coffee transform. You're going to see it go from uh, solids up top to being well integrated. And then once the heat is applied well, uh, you'll start to see some crema. Not exactly crema, but um, it's the closest approximation for the idea that I can come to. If you're familiar with espresso, you know that um, pressure creates this crema substance, this sort of uh, tight, thin bubbles that are, that are bright, bright white. And after a little bit of heat is applied, uh, you start to see it here. It's not because of pressure, but rather because of heat. 
And so uh, once I start to see that, I know that the integration is going well. I usually will stir almost the entire time. If I have to go do something, I don't go too far because one of the hardest things I've ever had to clean up, and I've had to clean up uh, dropped eggs and, you know, glass bottles that have broken or whatever, you do not want to clean up an overboiled pot of coffee like this. It is just an absolute mess. So we're at about three and a half minutes to go and it's cooking nicely so this is the cowboy method if I was on an open flame I could create coffee in this way and as long as I have some straining methodology you could even use something like this this is a tight enough uh, screen that I could catch my grounds with this and get a very good delicious cup of coffee with this using the pour over method but um, by using the French press I use the screen here and by pressing down the grounds all of the coffee will remain up here and uh, it's slightly different than a traditional uh, press pot method traditional press pot method you keep the coffee in the carafe. You put your grounds down there and you just heat your water until it's boiling and then add your water to the grounds and then let it boil for uh, four minutes. You let it uh, steep for four minutes. I prefer doing it this way because at six minutes uh, I don't have the six minutes waiting for the boil and then the four minutes waiting for the steep. I just have really good intense coffee after six minutes. Two minutes left to go and at the two minute mark we start to see this break in the surface. We have this sort of creamy uh, almost chocolate looking top happening and in the last minute or so you'll start to see this get uh, quite bright. It's starting to get a little bit light. If you like intense coffee flavor, this is a great way to have coffee. It really is. I only wish that I had a gas stove because I think it would be even better. Yeah, the top of that is quite smooth now. Lots of tight little bubbles. And we're down to the last minute. I would also say when you have all this hot liquid around, uh, you obviously need to be pretty careful. You know, if, if I had my kids here, I would make sure that they were nowhere near this operation because uh, not only do I not want to clean this up, but I also do not want anybody to be hurt. So at this point I'm going to stop stirring. We have about a half a minute left. and. Again, I just turn on my heat to full heat and let it go. And I'm going to start to see the surface start to pop a little bit. It feels really good because it's cold in here. And regardless of whether or not I see a boil, because I know that it is about to boil because of the six minutes of heat, um, I'm about two, one zero. I'm going to go ahead and stop it now anyway. And I'm going to go ahead and very carefully pour my coffee out, making sure not to overfill the craft. I'm just going to set this here for a second. always easier to clean that pot while it's still hot. 
just washed out right there. I can set it aside. This is kind of important. You want to make sure that the grounds are well distributed before you press it. Because if all the grounds are stuck at the top and you're using all of your pressure to push down, you're going to have a hard time of it. So, start around one last time, take out my spoon, clean that off, set it aside, and then note that there is a divot on this side that goes right where the handle is. I'm going to be careful to put this in over the sink. And now I'm going to press. This is pretty important. Notice how slow this process is. I'm using some pressure, but not so much pressure that I'm going to throw this thing across the room. And if it ever gets stuck, I pull it up a little bit, pull up on the plunger, and push back down. And if I had larger grounds, it would be less of an issue. Because I have finer grounds, I'm getting some extra resistance that I would not normally get. Do not force this process. Do not try to speed up this process. Every once in a while just back off. Slow and steady gets it done. And you'll have an amazing cup of coffee. Almost there. What you don't want to do too is you don't want to push the plunger so hard that uh, grounds escape through. Because grounds in your coffee is not tasty. And there it is. We have a perfectly beautiful well-brewed pot of coffee. It'll get me two large uh, cups. By large, I mean like this. And um, just set up your cup however you want to. I like mine with uh, cream and sugar. And enjoy. Thanks so much for joining me. Have a good day.